In this part of the lecture, we're going to discuss how microorganisms are used uh, in food production, like wine production, bread production, beer production, uh, when we make cheese, yogurt, and so forth. We know that uh, uh, fermentation is used. The fermentation is basically anaerobic respiration of the bacteria uh, that's beneficial for production of be uh, wines and beer and bread. We use yeast, same exact way. Uh, 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 that's produced any alcohol that's produced during the process of fermentation uh, will be evaporated during cooking of the bread and cake and all kind of cookies that require this uh, uh, microorganism food spoilage uh, uh, what is food spoilage food spoilage is basically when uh, uh, the uh, number of bacteria uh, increase in a food and gets to the point that uh, actually produces waste product that basically uh, uh, smells and uh, consequently the pathogen uh, in bacteria may increase and that will consequently cause uh, foodborne illnesses. Uh, common food spoiled by bacteria uh, uh, could uh, be a lot of wide range of bacteria important in food spoilage. Uh, they could be uh, cyclophils, for instance, like organs that could multiply in refrigerator. So remember, we said cyclophils are microorganisms that could grow at lower uh, lower temperature. Uh, that indicates that even refrigerator cannot stop their growth. So they could happily grow at that temperature because they are already uh, uh, liking this low temperature. And uh, less commonly, uh, uh, more commonly, it's caused by bacteria. Less commonly, it could be caused by uh, fungus but keep in mind majority of there's food uh, infection and there's food poisoning food poisoning is caused by the toxin or the spores produced by the bacteria whereas food infection is caused by the life microorganisms so life microorganisms do not cause cause food poisoning uh, they cause food infection whereas food poisoning is caused by uh, and not by the uh, bacteria itself but by the what happened uh, but by the toxins that they are produced by the spores that they are producing as food intoxication uh, and here we discuss some common uh, uh, bacteria that cause food poisoning like staphylococcus that food causes food poisoning and uh, botulism is caused by uh, clostridium botulum that's another bacteria that causes this um, uh, food poisoning could cause and affects the nervous system and other some other uh, uh, food poisoning uh, 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 bacteria like salmonella uh, E. coli causes food poisoning and the E. coli more specifically 0157 uh, H7 uh, this is the type that actually causes foodborne uh, diseases and here's another example of salmonella that you see an example of the other bacteria that causes food poisoning food preservation if you know exactly how the microorganisms grow in the food we could easily prevent the uh, uh, food from going bad so how do you do it like canning pasteurization cooking refrigerator freezing drying uh, by drying what do you do? You reduce the amount of water available for the growth of microorganisms. And earlier we discussed if the food doesn't have a water activity, if it has water activity of below uh, 0 0.9, it cannot support the growth of microorganisms. On the other hand, fungus could still grow at this uh, lower temperature. But if you reduce the water activity below 0 0.8, then the fungus cannot grow too. Uh, what does cooking do? Increasing the temperature, you kill the bacteria. What does freezing do? Freezing basically stops all the chemical reactions. Chemical reactions means what? All the metabolic reactions. And if there is meta no metabolic reactions, the food is going to be kept and microorganisms cannot grow. Refrigerator doesn't uh, completely stop the growth of microorganisms. But what it does is it slows down the growth of microorganisms what we do with the canning again we're removing the air from it and by removing the air you remove oxygen no oxygen available for the bacteria means bacteria will not be able to grow because in order for bacteria to grow they have to do 
uh, uh, metabolism and metabolism requires what oxygen so all the aerobic microorganisms cannot grow and here we have those uh, details and that's the end of the lecture hope you uh, will be ready for exam number three in this lecture we, are, uh, we will discuss food microbiology uh, so to understand how uh, microorganisms uh, affect the food or growing food uh, spoil the food we have to understand basically the intrinsic factors the factors within the food and the uh, extrinsic factors factors outside the food intrinsic factors are the, uh, basically the environments within the food like how much water is available with the food the pH nutrient biology and biological barriers and so forth and the extrinsic factors are the factors environmental factors for example the foods that have a lot of water will support the growth of microorganisms the foods that have less water will not support growth of microorganisms if you look at uh, uh, food that you have in your household for instance like meat has a lot of water uh, so meat is going to go bad very quick on the other hand uh, if you look at the dry beans nuts uh, 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 or for instance like red kidney be kidney beans uh, they could be saved for a number of months or even years if you look at the rice that you purchase from supermarket you could just keep it in your uh, house uh, uh, for number of months uh, before using it why because they have less water so less water means what less support for the growth of microorganisms so water activity within the food is important for the growth of microorganisms any food that has water supports the microorganisms growth any food that doesn't have uh, a wood activity or water does not support so uh, anything that's dried will not support so here uh, most bacteria require a water activity of 0.9 a pure water has a water activity of point, uh, 1.0 fungus on the other hand will grow at a, a water activity of lower than bacteria that's why when you look at the uh, uh, bread the bread uh, uh, is gone bad with the mold and fungus because bread, cooked bread, has less wood activity. And that less wood activity does not support the growth of bacteria, so bacteria cannot grow in bread. And what could grow in bread is fungus. So usually products with higher wood activity, bacteria, lower wood activity, bacteria cannot grow, but fungus could tolerate uh, lower water activity compared to bacteria and uh, the other intrinsic factors are pH so anything that has acidic pH or alkaline pH bacteria cannot grow anything that's near neutral pH bacteria could grow so organisms uh, uh, um, that could tolerate lower pH for instance like fungus that's why any food that you see acidic uh, in your refrigerator or outside the refrigerator will be spoiled by fungus for example if you look at the oranges oranges have uh, uh, acidic pH bacteria cannot grow in that acidic pH so what grows in that uh, uh, acidic pH fungus so pH affects the growth of bacteria uh, the other ones that you're going to see nutrients how rich the nutrients of the food is if food has all the vitamins all the amino acids fats means like it will grow support the growth of microorganisms for example if you can take again uh, uh, when you purchase meat from supermarket and that meat at room temperature gonna go bad very quick why because the meat has protein it has uh, fat it has carbohydrates it has the vitamins it has minerals so the bacteria will grow much quicker because the same exact way that we require from A to Z for our growth bacteria also requires from A to Z for the growth of microorganisms on the other hand if you look at the say for instance like if you take a cup of water and put a spoon of sugar in it and dissolve it it doesn't go bad why because that spoon of sugar sugary water doesn't have the proteins doesn't have the 
uh, uh, fat, it just has the carbohydrate, it doesn't have the vitamins and minerals that's required for the growth of microorganisms. So microorganisms cannot uh, grow at that uh, sugary water on the other hand. So the nutrient content is important. The rich, the nutrient content of the food is, the better it will support the growth of microorganisms. Biological barrier is basically the skin of the food. Uh, if you look at a tomato, um, a tomato with intact skin will not grow uh, will not go bad as quick as a tomato uh, which has a damaged skin. So those are the biological barriers. So ma majority of food have some kind of cover or skin that prevents them from spoilage. Antimicrobial chemicals, uh, uh, for, in for example, some food uh, will produce some antimicrobial uh, uh, enzymes like, like lysozyme, and the lysozyme will attack and destroy bacteria. Uh, those are all intrinsic factors, so the factors that are found within the food. And other, uh, other uh, uh, factors like extrinsic factors also affect the growth of microorganisms. What are the extrinsic factors? The availability of oxygen. If there is no oxygen, the bacteria cannot grow. If the temperature is low, the bacteria cannot grow. So uh, that's why when we purchase food, we put it in the refrigerator because refrigerator has around like four degrees of Celsius and the four degrees of Celsius do not, does not allow the bacteria to grow. But keep in mind that cold will not kill bacteria. So when you put the food in the freezer, the bacteria do not die, just the growth of bacteria will stop. When you put it in the refrigerator, the bacteria again do not die but the growth is slowed down. So the lifespan of the food increases so you could keep the food for a longer period of time. However, you have to know that there are different types of bacteria. Mesophils are the bacteria that uh, live around like 25 degrees to 40 degrees uh, and the optimal temperature is roughly around 37 degrees. So those are the bacteria that live at the same temperature as our body temperature then you have the psychophils who, who prefer lower temperature and then you have thermophils that grow at a higher temperature uh, for example this one supports the low temperature uh, like food if you look at the fish when you get the fish because the ocean temperature is lower most likely you're going to find this type of bacteria now if you take that fish and put it in the refrigerator still this bacteria will grow because uh, it cannot uh, uh, stop the growth of microorganisms because they grow at lower temperature. So storage temperature is going to be what? Extrinsic factors that we kind of like uh, uh, try to uh, uh, stop the growth of microorganisms. So that's why when we purchase the food, we put it in the refrigerator. Uh, the other extrinsic factor is the amount of oxygen. That's why when, whenever you say uh, remove oxygen, uh, you uh, basically inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Microorganisms, in order for them to grow, they require oxygen. However, you have to keep in mind, unless if the bacteria is anaerobic bacteria, which could grow in the presence of, uh, uh, in the absence of oxygen, most bacteria, aerobic bacteria, cannot grow. Uh, that's why when you uh, buy the conserved cans, the cans that has food, they're basically, the oxygen from those cans have been removed and they have no oxygen. Uh, so, uh, but you have to know that there are different types of bacteria. You have anaerobic bacteria and you have facultative bacteria that live both in the presence of oxygen and absence of oxygen. There are aerotolerant bacteria that uh, could tolerate a little bit oxygen and micro aerophils uh, which could also uh, grow at low temperature, uh, low oxygen. Uh, then the next thing that you should know about uh, uh, foods, uh, microorganisms that's used for food production. We make them uh, microorganisms, we use them to produce yogurt, we use them to produce cheese, uh, uh, we use them to produce other beverages, food and so forth. 